Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to find out how the secret role of AI is a big part of conversational e-commerce. Big topic AI all over the place. We want to dive really deep into this today. And joining me on the show is Marshall Cohen. He is the CEO of Clevertar.com. Marshall is a seasoned entrepreneur with a background in artificial intelligence and a passion for enhancing customer experiences. He has spearheaded the development of Conversagent.app, an advanced AI-driven shopping assistant, revolutionizing online retail. His insights on conversational commerce and AI personalization are sought after in various industry forums, and he frequently speaks on the future of e-commerce and the growing role of AI in shaping customer interactions and business strategies. So we have a lot to cover. So let's welcome Marshall to the show. Hi, how are you today? Hi, Klaus. Great to see you. And hi, everyone online. Great to have you on the show. So let's start and... First question from my side for the listeners who do not know what conversational e-commerce stands for. Can you give me the definition of what conversational AI in e-commerce stands for? Sure. We'll probably start with just conversational commerce, really. That's the that's the kind of the key. And e-commerce is a is a transition from that, but it's certainly not new. Um, you know, been been around for a while in, in the e-commerce world and people will understand it. Uh, you know, it's being where your customers are and really engaging with your customers. Um, you know, it certainly really came to the forefront when um, social media and omnichannel came up. You know, that was a real big part of it. People people realized that the, the best way to actually connect with your customers is to be where they are. <laughs> so, you know, uh, talking to people in WhatsApp and Instagram and, and that sort of thing has really elevated that. Interestingly, um, you know, the, the big focus initially around conversational commerce or conversational e-commerce even uh, was very much about uh, you know, the ease of connection and making that uh, convenient connection for the customers. The more convenience for the customer, the more likely they were to to engage with you as a brand. Then that's kind of changed over the last couple of years. There was certainly, uh, as a result of, you know, the, the global cost of living issues and inflation has resulted in people focusing more on looking for a discount by connecting across multiple channels, you know, and even more like it's quite common for people to, co you know, consumers to connect uh, to a brand in both their SMSs or their newsletter and then connecting and following them on Instagram because brand loyalty has become a big part of that conversational commerce. So, you know, that, that's that been a, a big trend, looking for then discounts in across those channels. And then most recently, one of the biggest pushes that we're kind of noticing is uh, a drive towards personalization at scale mm -hmm. in conversational commerce. And that's where conversational AI and, and AI, analytical AI also can really come to the fore and play it's a big part in elevating your brand. Okay. Now, as an online seller, as a merchant, as a DTC brand, obviously you would love to talk to every customer on every channel all the time in person, just not doable. And even keeping up with customer inquiries is, is hard. Now, years ago, chatbots came up and everyone knows these chatbots. And I think most people are annoyed with this. At least that's that's my experience with them because it's like, yeah, that's not really what I want. It happens every day. And um, AI is on the path to change that. Um, tell me a little bit on how AI is coming into the game and what kind of differences it is making. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and as, as you mentioned, you know, the the early versions of chatbots were were quite disappointing. I think people expected there to be a little bit more, again, that of that two way engagement. But uh, uh, it certainly has led to more of a uh, a funneling of, of the consumers as opposed to actually enabling them. And that's where modern AI is really stepping up. You know, AI also is, is not a new thing. We've had AI around for a, a long time. You know, predictive text on your phone or your Netflix recommendations, that's all AI. Um, but, the, you know, the, the interesting thing, and certainly with large language models, which has really hit, you know, that's, you know, at the end of 2022, when the OpenAI launched ChatGPT, had a massive impact, obviously, on opening people's eyes to what the possibility of a real 
a real seemingly uh, real conversation with with an AI or a chatbot could be. And so, yeah, that hitting the scene has has meant that it's it's opened up these possibilities to connect and have a conversation, like you're saying, at scale with uh, with your customers and actually you know help provide them with the uh, with the answers that they're actually looking for in real time. Mm -hmm. I think most of us by now have experience with ChatGPT and I'm, I'm really glad to have you here because you are an AI for a very long time, have a good experience there and have seen the whole development of the, the this part of technology there. So when it comes to DTC brands, I think one fear that they have is that they're with AI, there's a creepy or inauthentic customer experience. So there's something on the other side and they have no control over it, how it talks to the customer or how the customer feel, has a feeling for it. What's your take on that? Yeah, so it, I think control is a really big issue in, in AI and, and particularly for implementers and shop owners who are wanting to leverage AI to, you know, they're not particularly quite ready yet to let it loose on their customers, as it were, you know, because as, as, uh, as, uh, I think everyone is experiencing a, a, a revival of, uh, Isaac Asimov versions of iRobot AI coming and getting us. So you don't really want to have one of them in our, in our online store <laughs> making promises that it can't fulfill. And that, that is a really important point, you know, the, the, the hallucinations around chat GPT is certainly an issue. And, um, there, there's ways to kind of constrain that, uh, the way that an AI can communicate. Uh, and that's certainly what we've done with our, our product conversagent. Uh, it, it, it can train and it's only able to respond and answer questions about the products in that Shopify store or uh, about their you know, return policies and things like that. So constraining it is, is certainly a, you're able to do that. But you're also then, you know, and as a merchant, you can then provide it with additional information that it will then, you know, you're, it'll be uh, enabled to answer. And, and, you know, knowing that, you know, for, for a merchant, knowing that you can control it a little bit and can constrain it to answer specifically in these realms, you can't, tell it exactly how to answer things a lot of the time because that's the way not the way that generative ai works but you know being able to control that scope certainly provides a level of assurity for our merch mm -hmm. now you're working with a large number of, of merchants on what's the most creative innovative or unexpected way when it comes to the customer language because that should be on brand uh, that brands are using right now how they leverage ai in talking the right in the right voice, in the brand's voice to yeah. the customer. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's a couple of, you know, with, with AIs at the moment, there's a number of solutions out there and, and all of these should provide, you know, uplifts in conversation and in conversion rates and average order value should save you time because it can respond at scale and it can also be multilingual and 24-7 accessible. But... Uh, as you mentioned, having a consistent brand uh, message and having the AI actually respond on brand is really cool. Um, you know, we've got a number of our customers. Um, as you mentioned, we have a, one of our, our customers sells um, beard products, of which uh, I was quite happy to try out for obvious reasons. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's really fun. Like he, he's kind of called it uh, Dave, uh, which is a, you know, a, a quintessential uh non-threatening male name there to help you out. And it's kind of quite a, a an ocker Australian uh, <laughs> uh, idiom. So the way it talks and it connects and says, oh, you know, g'day, mate, how, how are you going? Like, can I help you out? Uh, it's, it's, it's quite fun, you know. And again, that it it's able to pick up a lot of that tone from the content on the website already. But then it can also, uh, yeah, you can you can tweak it and customize it further to really make sure that it's connecting in that brand voice that you want for uh, your store. And and again, comes back to that conversational commerce that 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 can hit across multiple channels as a result. Mm -hmm. 
Let's talk about the different channels or the user journey. It's not only customer service. There's much more involved in there. What kind of features does oh, yeah. your solution offer? Yeah, that, that, it's really great. I, I love talking about the buyer's journey, you know, the, the purchase funnel for, for merchants. It's something that a lot of merchants know, but they don't really articulate. So it's really, it's really good to think about this, uh, uh, you know, as, as a merchant, you want to consider the stages of that purchase funnel for your customers. Again, it's that connecting and customer engagement. So, you know, our product can actually, because it's not just a, a traditional chatbot that sits in the bottom right corner that says, you know, hey, I'm here, ask me a question, uh, which is a lot of, a lot of the time we'll bring back some, you know, <laughs> fairly negative connotations immediately as soon as you see something like that. But as you mentioned, people are a lot more aware of chat GPT style conversational dialogue boxes now. And so you can actually embed them directly in your Shopify store, whether that's on a per product page, category pages, or over the top of, you know, the front page of the website. And it can then ask questions of the consumers. So, um, you know, it certainly engages at that level there you know you can it can ask questions uh, and as a result of doing so it it really can highlight its ability to provide that first level of engagement on the website which is product discovery so you can go onto a website and you say hey look i'm looking for a corner desk and it will say great you know it could ask you some questions about what you're looking for and then it'll recommend a couple for you to look at and then you go into the next stage of the, the you know, the, the purchase funnel, which is the product consideration. And then it can ask questions to help you decide which one is the right one for you. And then, as you say, can then take you through to purchase and then post-purchase support, which is certainly the traditional area of, of chatbots um, has been really focused on customer support. But we see the biggest benefit of, of the introduction and the the changes that large language models and generative AI are bringing to e-commerce is that it's it's a full funnel engagement. You know, it's from product discovery, product consideration, purchase, and post-purchase support. Mm -hmm. For me, it sounds it will change the way people shop completely uh, and, and bring us back to the times when we had brick and mortar stores when we were going out and a sales assistant was waiting on the door and asking can i help you with something and then yeah. taking you directly to what you're interested in and obviously giving recommendations what's your prediction for the future and you're doing this for a long time is yeah. will the, the, the traditional sales funnel with home page category page product page will that vanish at some point and just ai will take you by the hand and take you through the purchase process mm, yeah great great point um i i do believe so i think and interestingly if you think about and i like to kind of flip this upside down uh, and think about it, the, the whole point of e-commerce websites were, were created, as you say, to facilitate uh, something that we couldn't do because we, you know, people weren't in the bricks and mortar store, right? So the ability, the, the functions of searching and filtering were only really ever created. You, never, you don't do that in a bricks and mortar store, right? That's purely for e-commerce. And that's because we couldn't have a conversation, and we can't just go in and say, look, this is what I'm looking for. Can you help me? It's mission shopping, right? So you go in, you have an idea of roughly what you want, or maybe you already know what you want. You can go straight through. But if you need a bit of help, that's where that, that uh, shop assistant really comes into the for, uh, forefront. So, yeah, I, I, I do think that searching, filtering, uh, that concept of, uh, you know, having all of your products in a catalog as it were and you know, that might stay but it's going to be completely disrupted by uh, the conversational ai style uh um co uh, you know conversational e-commerce uh, mm -hmm. and as, as you say i think that's going to be where people are connecting with a trusted ai platform uh and that ai will know their purchase history knows their uh, preferences possibly even knows when they're about to run out of something or you know there's a new a new night a, a new shirt in season that's got a really cool 
Patton Marshall, maybe you should go and check it out. And it'll be cross uh, cross stores as well. You know, I think that'll kind of elevate. So it could be an entirely new entry point into e-commerce other than just going and, you know, brand loyalty will be is more important than ever because otherwise it'll just be, you know, a, a, you know, as, as it is at the moment, people can search through Google or something like that. And that's their start point to, to find, uh, find a store, but really, um, yeah, it, I think it'll be a bit of a, it'll be quite a disruptor. Yeah. I want to touch on the part of data privacy, uh, because you said mm. it will recognize you, you will come back, you get new recommendation. Uh, how is that dealt with? Yeah, the, again, that's a, a really important point for customers. It comes down to the solution that's being used. So the 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 first party data, well, it's even zero party data, which is is a relatively new term being being used, at where it's being you know directly input into uh, the e commerce store, people's information and preferences and personal information. You you can't really necessarily control what information people are going to share with a conversational AI. And so uh, it really does come down to making sure that you're following as as high quality uh, privacy standards like the GDPR as well as, you know, the, the, there's a whole standard, a uh, whole swag of different standards that you really want to make sure that you know, your, your provider is, is following. But also it comes down a little bit towards you know, whether they're looking to use that data for training of something else. Um, you know, we, we work in, it, we have certainly worked in other areas like health uh, and providing a con conversational AI in health. And the privacy around that, as you could appreciate, is, is significant. So, uh, the, you know, there's, there's, there's certainly ways to further improve that privacy scope. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, isolation, uh, you know, data sovereignty and things like that, where you can really make sure that the, the privacy information is being contained, um, you know, just within that service that it's being used. And then if it's going to be used for other purposes, it's sanitized or, you know, de-identified. So it's not, there's no personal information being sent outside of the, uh, outside of the tool and the organization. But it, it's interesting because, you know, there, there's certainly a trend and this is along that lines of the com conversational e-commerce and personalization is that individuals are being more, are getting more and more okay with some of the information being used and provided to a customer in, in exchange for something. There's a, a report recently uh, where it's saying it's over 50 Five percent of of consumers are happy to provide their mobile phone number in exchange for a free gift. Um, just you know, I think people are are being certainly more uh, accustomed or certainly acclimatized to to sharing at least some of their personal information. Yeah, yeah, no, I would agree. No. Obviously, you can have a, or it's not a question if you want to use AI in your business or not. It's the question is how good are you in using AI? And you can have a bit of an unfair advantage in jumping on the train early enough. So give me a bit of the idea how your app um, works within Shopify. What's the day-to-day -day life of a merchant, of a store manager working with it? Great. Thanks, Klaus. Yeah, the... I have a bit of a saying that in, you know, it's, and I used to say in 10 years, but it's probably more like five years now that there's going to be two types of companies, those that use AI or leveraging AI and those that have gone out of business. So <laughs> um, certainly utilizing AI, as you say, and early, early adopters have a real advantage here. And it, it's not, it's certainly not common for people to be leveraging um, you know, AI shopping assistance yet. Um, I do think that that's certainly changing as people are becoming a lot more aware of it. It's more of a question of why wouldn't you do it? As I said, you know, it can provide a fairly, fairly, uh, obvious increase in your conversion rate and average order value saves you time in responding to queries and cuts out that first level of support, uh, also provides that 
ability to do so at a 24 seven and multilingual. So, you know, you find, find one and test them out that the uh, find one that's right for you. Um, so in, in terms of, uh, a, a, a normal adoption of, of conversagent for our, our merchants, uh, they would go to the Shopify store and you can search for conversagent, um, directly in the, the Shopify app store and you can go in there and install it. it takes three to five minutes to uh to ingest it's called <laughs> it's a weird way of putting it people say training it's not actually training but it's ingesting uh so it learns about all of the products on the website it learns all about uh you know the policies and your faqs etc and then it's you basically use your theme editor to put it where you want it whether you want it as a floating thing in the corner or you can as i said add it in embedding as just drag and drop so it's very easy to set up and it's ready to go uh, and then you can go into the admin area and you can add additional information about you know background of your industry if you want to provide additional information so it's very easy to set up very easy to tweak and control and kind of add more information um and then it's it's up and running um we have an additional one of the things that kind of probably different uh, in in our tool to you know, certainly other uh, chatbots out there that we have a secondary AI that actually analyzes uh, a lot of the conversations and provides insights and that I think is probably one of the most important areas as I said like all of these solutions they better uh, provide you with an uplift in conversion rate and average order value. But certainly some of our customers have said that the best, the bigger benefit that they get, even over increasing their sales, is that control and insights around their business it can, you know, really provide, um, you know, strategic business insights as to what they should be looking at because it's a real pulse on the customer, like an actual bricks and mortar store a shop assistant would do they're not just there to sell they're also there to tell you hey today we had five people come in asking for this particular uh, winemaker uh, and this is a real story for one of our customers uh, he got uh, a number of people coming to his uh, uh, wine reseller e-commerce store uh, and people were asking for this particular winemaker and he didn't have them in stock but he could see these conversations from an hour uh, our agent and he's now brought that into his store and um, yeah, he's, he's added an extra line item uh, to actually go to what the customers want. Again, comes back to that conversational commerce, right? I love the story and it was actually my next question would have been around success stories and I just, you just gave a perfect example there and I think it's something that people are learning right now that is not just static customer service and i'm using this in my marketing day-to-day -day work basically asking the ai is that what can i do better so it's it's far more than just this normal conversation it's really getting advice from the data that is there and i think that's a very important fact for the future is you get more than a app you get a additional manager in in your store so you talked briefly about the um, onboarding process. Uh, who's your perfect customer? Uh, our perfect customer is probably small e-commerce businesses and scaling e-commerce businesses. So they're people who, you know, you, you've got a number of staff who are there, you know, not, not really ideal for people who don't have traffic to your website, but you've got a business and you're, you're, you've got something that you know you can scale whether you've also got a bricks and mortar store or not, that's uh, a little bit irrelevant, but it can certainly provide with that additional ability to, you know, people, people who are looking for increasing their efficiencies around their sales, uh, as well as increasing sales and looking to really grow their business. They're really the, the people who are going to get the most out of using an AI shopping assistant like Conversagent. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the pricing structure. I think that's something that a lot of people are still don't get their heads around where AI companies make their money with. How does that look for a shop of sure. Yeah, it, it is interesting because uh, as you, you say, it's not really a, a, a well understood way of, 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 uh, you know, I suppose tracking and, and 
and proving out the, <laughs> the, the, the benefits. But our, our model is certainly, you know, we've designed the pricing model to be the most understandable from a merchant's perspective. So it's not, it's not just, you know, total number of visitors that you have, and it's not tokens or something like that, which is very, you know, AI specific that most merchants won't understand at all. Ours is based on number of conversations. So it's a usage based scale. We've got a couple of different price plans, uh, 20 us, 40 us and hundred us. Um, and really that, uh, and then we do have enterprise level solutions as well. We've got a, a number of enterprise customers. Um, but the, those levels and that usage a based pricing model really helps because it means that as they grow and as they scale, the merchants I'm talking about here that, and they're getting that engagement they, That's how we're actually making our money is by improving your engagement. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give e-commerce brands that are just starting to explore conversational AI? Where should they yeah. start? What thought process should they go through first? Yeah, I think I think first first and foremost, if look if you're looking at you know conversational e-commerce and and particularly in conversational AI and and how you can leverage that is is looking at probably the different options for you. Uh, I don't you know don't don't just go in and start adding every tool that has AI in it. <laughs> you know, I think I think you really want to think what's what is it that I want to get and and you can look some people talk you know there, there are some tools out there that just talk about really high roi numbers and you know you, that can be a little bit questionable because that's not very transparent about how they're coming up with those so really you want to think in terms of you know what what is it that i really want to be getting out of this and if it is better connection and, and improving your personalization and your brand then you can look at, at tools like conversation um, but really you want to try or trial them. So look for, look for tools that have a, a, a risk-free trial. Um, you know, conversation certainly has a, a 21 day free trial on all of our plans. Um, and so you can go on and try the, the largest plan and, and just see how you go. Uh, it doesn't, as I said, it really takes very little time to, to connect and set up and then our team can also help. And, and that's the other thing, you, you know, you don't want to go and by by doing these trials you can also find out a little bit more about the company behind them uh because again you know there's some ai tools that are out there which have been pumped out as part of the hype train over the last year with ai so you want to make sure that there's a bit of service behind them so you know contacting the the team and and getting to know them because you know the the companies that uh are there to really help you on your e-commerce journey are, are there for the long haul. So, you know, yeah. I, I highly recommend, yeah, try, trying a couple, connecting with the companies and checking out their reviews um, and then having a play with it yourself. Uh, you can, there's a number of demo sites as well. You know, it's, it's quite fun, uh, you, you know, to, to see what kind of things you can, it, it can answer and the way it can do it. The perfect match marketeers and store managers are usually very curious people and I, as i said you have a free trial so i would just recommend to go there and try it out before our coffee break comes to an end today is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet probably the main main things that i really want to, to focus on uh, and probably more more so to just highlight as as my key takeaway uh that's probably a, a good way to put it <laughs> I think, I think if you are looking at, uh, you know, really improving that brand awareness and, and personalization, saving yourself time by leveraging AI, then yeah, look, look at some of these tools, but really you want to find one that is really going to help you grow and unlock that e-commerce efficiencies around your, uh, your process and, and customer engagement so that you can actually really increase your sales. And ultimately, it, find something that will help you understand your customers better. Uh, that is one of the best ways for you to maximize your revenue growth. Okay, no, that sounds good. Where can people find out more about you guys? Yeah, you can find out more about us at conversagent.app. 
Uh, that's our direct website, as and also you can go find us via the Shopify app marketplace. If you want to know more about me, uh, please hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm always keen to chat about uh, broader AI uh, as well as e-commerce, and in particular, so that's certainly a big passion of mine. So yeah, excellent. Please reach Ooh. out. I love that. It's funny because I say that, and a lot of uh, and very very few people actually do do it. So do it. I challenge you. Message me. I want to. I want to hear from you. Okay. I will make it easy for our listeners. I will put all the links in the show notes. Then you're just one click away. And I hope a lot of people reach out to you. Marshall, thanks so much for giving us an overview of what's happening right now in AI. How ChatGPT can help you with your store and how you can get a additional manager in your store and not only something that helps with customer support. Thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Klaus. Great to have. Hey, a good chat with you. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you there.